Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my dark room. This video is going to be a little bit different because uh, I went to this car show and I had all sorts of problems with sunlight and bright sun you'll see in a moment. But uh, this video is going to be uh, about me having problems in the dark room trying to make a print from the negatives that I've got on this HP 5400 film. And uh, it'll be great at the end of the video if any of you guys can give me some input put some comments in and let us know what you would do with these negatives. I'll show you the negatives in a moment, but uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about where I was and what I was up to. So it's Sunday the 15th of September and I'm at the car show in Ryde and I bought out with me a roll of HP 5400 speed and an Olympus OM20 as well. So most of this so there was a car there. show in town and it was uh, in Ryde on the Isle of Wight. A lot of cars came from mainland Britain over to the Isle of Wight and uh, showing off, these guys were showing off their cars and there was literally hundreds and hundreds of classic cars at this car show and I was quite excited to get down there and take some photographs but when I got up that morning I noticed that it was uh, completely blue skies and the sun was super bright and the first thing I thought was do you know what if I take uh, if I take any film camera or any roll of film and just go out and start taking uh, photographs of the exteriors of these cars I'm going to be in trouble because that sun's so bright and them cars are really gleaming and, and chrome all over them. I'm just going to be getting highlight spots and it will just do my editing when I get back in the dark room or, or develop the film and look at the negatives and trying to make some prints. So I thought, let's keep away from the exteriors, let's work on the interiors and uh, at least they'll be in a bit of shade and I'll be able to get some decent photographs. You know, steering wheels, old classic um, dashboard speedometers and stuff like that, gear knobs and blah, blah, blah. So off I went and uh, knowing that I was going to be shooting interiors, I thought I'd take a roll of HP 5 400 with me. And uh, I didn't want to do anything fancy with the 400. I'm just going to shoot it at 400. I certainly wasn't going to be pulling the film because shooting interiors, I didn't want to sort of come down the shutter speeds into the, into the 15s and the 30s, especially handheld as well. Um, and I certainly wasn't going to push the film. There was no reason for me to do that. Um, even if I did, it would have been they would have been super contrasty from the bright sunny day. And uh, when I got to the car show, I started looking at the interiors, and most of the cars that I was interested in, unfortunately, had lots of sunlight coming through the window and all over the dashboard, which made it difficult for the photography because I had half in shade and, and and a lot of super bright highlights inside uh, the interior at the same time. So um, it started to get a little bit tricky. But not only that, I didn't have time to, to sit there and fiddle around with, um, you know, meters and, and, and try and get the exposure correct. So uh, I put the Olympus on 20 aperture priority, got me head through the side window and started taking pictures. As long as I had a half decent composition, I knew I was going to come away with some with some decent negatives. But uh, yeah, those bright spots really did start to play on me a little bit. Every time I found a car that I liked, I just found these highlights inside the interior that I was just I just knew I'd have trouble with. So after a couple of hours of dragging my wife Emma all around the car show, I came back and started to develop the film. And I used x one part to one part, and instead of the normal 12 minutes that I use for HP5, I decided to do it at 11 minutes. I didn't. I knew that the interiors were going to be contrasty, so I just tried to pull a little bit of that contrast down um, by just underdeveloping by a minute. Now, I told you earlier I didn't want to pull the film um, because that would have given me slower shutter speeds. That wasn't going to happen whatsoever. So uh, I'll just show you the negatives that I came back with. 
So these are the negatives here. So you can see the trouble I was having. Um, you know, these interiors were in shade and in sunshine as well. I couldn't avoid it. These cars were just in positions where, uh, you know, I couldn't exactly turn around and say, excuse me, mate, could you move your car a little bit for me so I can get a photograph of your interior. But you can see these negs, you can see these steering wheels. We've got chrome steering wheels going on, chrome decal, decals, whatever they call decals. Um, another chrome steering wheel here. And one particular negative I liked which was this one here um, I started working on this and I realized this part here is kind of like jet black almost and uh, you can see it bleeding off to the side the black is slowly bleeding out and that's the highlight that's um, that's the sun shining off the um, chrome on the steering wheel and no matter what I did I, I played around so much trying to um, see if I could get any tone at all inside this on this um on this chrome steering wheel and it just wasn't having none of it but uh you know um, but anyway these are the negatives that i was playing around with so i had to you know i didn't want to come away uh from the car show and have nothing to print at all so a couple that i had a look at was one here which i quite liked i think this was the jaguar interior i think it was a jaguar that's um one of them here if i just get a glare off for you it's quite nice and you know I did play around with it a lot, do quite a lot of test strips on it. This is glossy paper guys, this is Ilford's multi-grade warm tone paper and I must say thanks to the guys that support me on Patreon. Uh, this month I went out and got myself some of that paper, the warm tone Ilford multi-grade paper uh, to try out. Well I've played with it before I say try out but I don't often use it and uh, this time I went for photo speeds WT10 developer warm tone developer um, I'll be doing a comparison with with this paper and this developer along with um, normal standard non warm tone papers and developers um, but uh, anyway yeah back to these prints so this is warm tone paper and that was that Jaguar car now you can see straight away on the ashtrays I've got highlights there um, I've tried to get under control but they're just a little bit too ridiculous for my liking it is what it is i mean at the end of the day the sun was shining through the car and the ashtrays are chrome but uh, i'd like to have toned it down a little tiny bit and this was the other print that i liked and you can see lots of chrome going on in that picture and i've managed to try and hold it back a little bit and uh, i'll show you what i did in a moment and it's the only way how I knew to uh, control these chromy areas here, which was really burned out. And you can see all these test prints as well behind me that I've been that I was playing around with, and uh, a few other uh, um, test strips are in the bin. So I've got this negative that's got a, a massive highlights all over the chrome, and I've got shadow detail as well to try and um, work on. Now this isn't an important print, so why would I spend hours and hours in the darkroom trying to perfect something that's really just hobbyist work and uh, fun to do? But at the same time, you're still interested and you still want to learn how to how to do this stuff. So um, I've got out my contrast filters. You know, forget dodging and burning for now. I got out my contrast filters. I mean, I started off with the two and a half filters standard and continued that way, but uh, I was getting no nowhere at all. So uh, I decided to put a contrast zero filter in. And what I did, I ended up doing two minutes uh, with a contrast zero filter, just so that it could work on the highlights and, and kind of leave the blacks, but it's still gonna work on the backs, but very slowly. And then for another minute, I shoved in, um, which is still in the larger, I think, yeah. A contrast five filter which uh, for one minute just to let that work on the blacks so I started to get some decent results doing that another way I know I could have um, controlled the highlights was to pre-flash the paper I know this is multi-grade paper and I've done it before and it just takes the um, long word not a long word flash word the inertia off of the paper it takes the white away um, as so so much um, you know as as here on the ashtray it's kind of the same colour as the border of the paper. Uh, you know, so um, just a very, very, very slight pre-flash could possibly take the white away uh, from the ashtray, which, um, but I didn't go down that road of pre-flashing. I just went down a road of contrast filters. So uh, anyway, let's get on. I'm gonna make another print and I'm gonna show you guys what I was doing and uh, see how we get on. So I'll just quickly do a focus test on it. So this is a chrome uh, part of the steering wheel. 
and I can just see there's like bleeding, a uh, very slight sort of bleeding off of this off this chrome, which would be the highlight of the sun uh, bursting off of it. Um, you know, and the objective is not to have this chrome looking white as the paper. I need to have some kind of tone in it. Um, so I'm going to start off with a contrast zero fill. Just do a quick test strip for two minutes and see what it does with that chrome. Let's have a look. So I just need to find out where to place the paper. I'm going to place it over this side here where the chrome is. So let's do that for two minutes. I'm going to put a contrast zero filter in. Okay. So I'm just going to do that for two minutes and then I'll turn the cameras back on. So these are my first test prints that I did, just contrast zero. Um, this was two minutes and you can see, let's get my dodge tool. You can see the, uh, the, the, the chrome or the metal on the steering wheel is still way too blown out, so I need to burn it longer. I then went and tested it for four minutes, which is quite a long time under the enlarger. You know, you've got to stand still and not move because you don't want to jog the enlarger at all um, during that time. So this was four minutes and I've started to now get some detail into, into, that, um, into the metal on the steering wheel, into the chrome area there. Uh, then I did another four minute test. I thought, okay, well, I can live with that, but then what about the blacks on the rest of it? And you can see the contrast zero filters, really, it's only just started to tickle the blacks um, here. This is four minutes, a test strip on the black area. So um, I then went off and did a full print to have a look, see what it looked like. The blacks are okay. I could do them being a little bit blacker, but I've got detail back into that uh, steering wheel, apart from the center cap, which has got a highlight going across it. Um, it looks blacker than it is on camera, but it's um, that center cap still could do with a bit of darkening. So it's going to be another long test. This one, I'm going to have to do another test print at uh, four minutes with contrast zero. And then I'm going to do two minutes with uh, contrast five and just see if that can pop these blacks out. Now, don't forget, guys, this video is about what you would do. This is the way I would go around doing it. Um, but others may do it completely different. Uh, it'd be interesting to know. So let me do my theory first. Contrast zero at four minutes and a contrast five at two minutes. Hey Google, play Phil Collins. All right, here's Phil Collins on Google Play Music. Okay guys, so this is the second print that I've made. After a small test, um, I put the contrast zero filter in, uh, sorry, contrast five filter in for two minutes. So this print has had the contrast zero filter for four minutes and the contrast five filter for two minutes, split grade printing if you like. Uh, this was the original one that I did. Um, there's no five filter, just contrast zero for four minutes. So let's look at this one. Um, the blacks may be a bit blacker on the video um, compared to what I'm looking at, but they're still a little bit too deep uh, in this area but I've managed to um, get the, the center piece of the steering wheel um, a lot blacker than this one but I've just lost a little bit of detail around around these areas here I'm quite happy with this bit here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dodge for two minutes I'm going to, I'm going to do exactly the same thing and I'm not going to let any contrast five hit this area or this area here so I'm literally going to use my dodge tool um, and try and dodge as much as I can there and there during the contrast five um, enlarging um, I'm going to let that go because I quite like that but just this bit and this bit I'm going to try and bring those dials back out and then I'll be pretty much finished let's have a go right so hopefully you guys can see uh, where I am here I've just turned one of the red lights off so you can see the uh, baseboard better um, I've just done the four minutes God, this filter hole is really hot just done the four minutes out on the uh, shit on, um, on on contrast zero I'm now putting contrast five in I'm gonna let that run for two minutes but I need to uh, use my dodge tool and just dodge the uh, speedos or the dials on that dashboard so Let's put the timer on for two minutes and off we go. I don't know if you can see, I'm just going to cover that for one minute and then the other one for one minute. So I guess they're both getting one minute each of contrast five. 
So hopefully those dials will pop. Um, it's hard to concentrate on talking when you're doing this. Okay, there we go. Get a burn tool out, which is just a piece of card with a hole in it somewhere. Where's that gone? I've lost the bloody thing. Okay, so it's just a piece of card with a hole in it. I'm going to try and uh, get in the middle of that. That bezel, that, uh, the bezel, what do they call that thing in the middle? Probably the horn, actually. Okay, so whatever this comes out like is my final print. I'm not going to waste any more paper. But, uh, as I always say, it is what it is. All right, it's fixed and into the wash. And this is how I wash my resin prints. I've got a sink down here. And I just keep pouring buckets, a little hole in this tray and the water comes back out. And I've also got some photo speed rinse aid in there as well. Wow, so hopefully uh, this is coming out okay on the camera. So I've already told you this was the split grade, the zero and the five. This was just zero filter. Uh, this is the one I've just washed and this is my final print and all I did differently on this one was contrast zero for four minutes, contrast five for two minutes, but during that two minutes uh, for one minute I kept light back away from this area and also this area which made the dials pop more than um, just hitting it with, with contrast five for, for two minutes straight. So the rest of the image got five uh, filter for two minutes, but these only got one minute each, which just made, it got a little bit of highlight going on. And it made the dials a little bit whiter as well. So that's the final print that I came out with and I'm quite happy with it. I've managed to, you know, pull the highlights away from the, from the steering wheel, the silver on the steering wheel, uh, somewhat. But, um, you know, ideally I would love to have shot that in, in shade with it. It was just tricky, you know, shooting down there uh, with that blazing sun hitting everyone it was just really hard work um, and you know you you get to something like that and you've got expectations but as soon as I left in the morning I knew straight away that I, I was going to be in trouble with with the um, with the sun glaring so, so hard as it did that's why I didn't touch any exteriors that's why I went into the interiors but then realized damn all the cars that I liked had um uh, add sun coming through 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 the windscreen through the side windows straight onto the interior but uh, you know you just grab the ball by the horns and carry on hopefully get some decent pictures out of it but uh, that's what I came out with anyway but um, yeah the reason for this video guys if any of you have would have done this differently I mean I, I sat there for what that was that was six minutes under the enlarger everything was getting hot I was getting hot and sweating now but six minutes under the enlarger seems quite a long time and uh, quite boring as well. But I'd be interested to know what you guys would have done differently uh, to try and kill those highlights. Obviously, pre-flashing, we could have gone down that road. But it'd be interesting to see what you would have done. So leave a comment uh, on this video for me to read and also others as well. And if I get any decent comments or any constructive stuff, I might come back in the dark room and try it and let you guys know how I'll get on. Yeah, I've got to mention a new channel on YouTube called The Photographer's Bag. I'll stick a link in the description of this video and also a title here so you guys can see it. Uh, Graham, his name is, and he's got a few subscribers, but he meant he's got loads of cameras and, and loads of knowledge on film photography. At the moment, he's showcasing all the cameras that he's got. Um, and showing you how they work and detailing all the information about all these old SLR cameras. So uh, if you're into film photography, definitely worth checking his channel out and uh, give him a big thumbs up and a big subscription as well. Uh, get him on the road because I think his, uh, his stuff's going to be value in time to come. So his name's Graham, the photographer's bag. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching the video. Hope you liked it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, give it a big thumbs up as well, this video, and stick your comments uh, below for everyone else and myself to see. i also got to say thank you very much to the guys that support me on Patreon. Uh, you guys are great. Thank you so much for your help. See you later.